Am I on the internet? <laughs> Let's see. Testing one, two. Check, check, check. All right, testing one, two. Is this thing on? I think I'm on. Good morning. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Welcome. Yeah, the stream doesn't start until I get confirmation from someone in the chat. <laughs> that's that's how professional I am. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Jack, how's it going? I'm excited about today's uh, beginning of the stream anyway. I actually have a, a plan for once. Yo, yo, yo. How's it going, Jason? Sonic, everybody's here. All right. So, uh, I'm going to, uh, we need to, I need to kill like four more minutes until these notifications go out. <laughs> I forgot to start the, uh, I went to start the, uh, what do you call it? The little countdown I usually do. And it's like 9.58. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah. So, uh, but yeah, what I try to do is to let it run for five or 10 minutes because it takes forever to get all these notifications out. And then everybody gets mad that I started early. <laughs> no, um, so I want to try something a little different today to start. Uh, and I don't know if I've done much of this really. Um, and I, and I might take this and, and chop it up into a, a YouTube video. I owe, I owe Skillshare video. <laughs> I know you guys aren't skipping the Skillshare promos, by the way, either, by the way. I, I, I looked at the uh, the analytics on the last Skillshare video, and you get this little, like, you know, the line going across of people watching, the watch time, and then as soon as the ad appears, it's like, derp, it disappears, and then a minute later, it pops back up. Like, what are the point? What are the point of these ads? I'm like, I would do the same thing. <laughs> I love Sam Keith inking, so I'm curious what you will do with this. I've I've already done it actually. <laughs> I posted this on Twitter already, but uh, but now we will work on this someday. But um, so this is a drawing by Sam Keith. It got posted in uh the 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 color jam, uh, the color jam hashtag on Twitter. If you guys don't uh, don't follow that tag. Uh, you you can search for uh, for that on Twitter and it'll pull up uh, all the posts of people working on these things. But somebody usually takes a, an ink drawing and then they'll scan it in or, or flat it. I mean, not scan it, and then uh, put it out on 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 the interwebs for you to be able to uh, to practice your coloring. So we, what we'll do at some point uh, today is we'll also we'll look at that hashtag and look at this drawing and see what people are doing. And see if if some of the things I'm talking about uh, make any sense or not. <laughs> That's the plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, I wanted to start with with something much more broad, I guess, than I usually do, um, uh, which is to do a little bit of an uh, uh, an, an an analysis of of the inks themselves, the drawing itself, the drawing itself, and. Um, and to hopefully help you guys understand uh, like why I would make the decisions that I would make coloring this. So um, I want to start uh, with no matter what your 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 plan is, um, I tend to always think in terms of values as far as like um, how light things are, how dark things are. And in this drawing, first off, I want to show you how see how can I put this? I guess let's start with the one of two ways this could usually go. I, I said, and then there's all the in-betweens too, but as far as like the two ends of the uh, uh, the spectrum here, I guess, the spectrum of possibilities. 
Let me grab all this stuff. I need, I need like a layer with just all of that crap selected because I'm going to do that like a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to drag this down and call it foreground. And that way I can just click that. No, I can't. I got to delete that. Don't try to follow what I'm doing. It doesn't matter right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to get all of these uh, layers fixed up here. Yeah, we'll do that, and then that, and that, and then we're good. And I need something to draw with on top. But I was looking at this, and I guess the, the, the first big choice to, to me um, is whether or not we want to put him as a darker figure on a light background or a light figure on a darker background. At least that's how my brain works. And again, I'm speaking in generalities here. It could be a dark background with a light gradient in it or something, but either it reads darker or it reads lighter, okay? Now, in this one, I would lean toward making the background light and the foreground darker because a couple of things, and really two, two big things for me. One is it's really important in this drawing this this silhouette here all right i'm gonna pick a color we can see hopefully there we go maybe a darker color lovely so what makes this you know wolverine is this okay we, we could see this guy you know in the dark just a silhouette from a mile away and we're gonna know <laughs> we're gonna know that that is uh that that's wolverine just because of the hair primarily, I think. The hair is an important, important part of this drawing. And the hair is black. The hair is completely inked. It's completely black. And so if I want this silhouette to read very clearly and all I have is black lines representing that shape, well, guess what? To me, that tells me I need to have lighter colors behind that because if I were to, say, throw a dark color behind it, it's like, well, you can see the hair, but it doesn't come out quite as much. And the other, my other, like, evidence to support <laughs> this idea is these little uh, black hanging stringy things down here. Really, really thin, textury black lines. Okay? So... Again, if if I decide that I want to darken the background, I'm going to weaken those little shapes, you know? And so to me, the indication to me in the line art, especially with the line art being the background, I should say, being completely blank, is uh is that the intention is that that would is lighter. Now, obviously this is not a rule. These are my ideas. You guys can do whatever the hell you want. But when I'm looking at this, that's what I'm seeing, is that a lighter background with a darker foreground, to me, makes more sense with what Sam intended here, is my, is my guess. And so I'm going to select all of this just and, uh, and just lower the value a little bit. All right. And it's what this does is along all those edges now, I'll put it right about there. So around all these edges now, I've got a really nice separation all along his forearms, this whole silhouette shape here. Um, again, we can clearly see all of this stuff. Um, and let's also look at this. I want to back this up for a second and, and look at this from a perspective where we are much further away from it. I'm going to hide that for a second. Um, but when we really back off of this, what's interesting to me, and I don't know, Sam Keith's genius enough to have Maybe done this on purpose, maybe not. But I thought it was fascinating that you basically have three big, like, dark shapes <laughs> um, that make up what are the, the dark shadows of this image. I'm sure it's a complete coincidence that it looks like claws, and there's no way that that wasn't that right. But um, uh, they're made of, how do his claws fit into his arm? None of your business. <laughs> He's Wolverine. He does whatever he wants. But uh, but the point that I wanted to show there is that you guys see this sort of triangle 
shape here. And again, he's sort of broken it up. It's almost like black stripes, which makes sense because anything that is striped draws a lot of attention. And so you get this sort of, this dark shape here, and then a light shape, and then a dark shape, and then a light shape, and then a bigger, darker shape, and then more light shapes. Like that sort of cadence of like light, dark, light, dark, like really makes this come forward off, off the thing, you know? If, if the shadow wasn't there, well, one, we'd be seeing a lot more of Wolverine than we probably want to, but if that shadow wasn't there, the entire composition of this drawing is very different, you know? House of the Nerd Show, welcome. Welcome, guys. So anyway, so the whole time I'm coloring, though, I want to make sure that I'm maintaining those shapes. Like, that's what's intended, and so I don't want to do anything to fight that. You know what I mean? Oh, no, the joke about the claws is that his claws are massive and that they're longer than his forearms. <laughs> But yes, thank you, Marta. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the other thing I want to talk about on the shapes on this, this almost has its own little, well, it does. It has its own little value structure be already because of the big black lines, the big white spaces. And then we've got all of this hair <laughs> on Wolverine, which is almost acting like a middle tone basically like you're basically getting a uh a gray out of all of this texture in the ink and so again i'm thinking about that and making sure that when i start adding my colors to that i want to reinforce that idea and i don't want to you know push that idea down i have a question about how to make puzzle covers not going to be covered in this stream sorry um, so we've got, uh, I've established what I want to be light and what I'm at least thinking about, uh, being, uh, uh, darker. And so we end up with something, uh, you know, something like this, let's say, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, let's get his claws too while we're at it. But there's something else, uh, and this is, I'm going to actually, I'm trying to decide if I want to color this. I'm probably not going to color this again today. I've actually done this already, and I'll show you in a little bit, uh, and then we'll jump into something else. But I do want to finish this one up, at least finish these ideas up. Um, but the other thing I wanted to point out is just how good this composition is in general. Just just the, the line art, the weight of the character sitting there, um, it's <clears throat> beard is coming back in nicely. It, it's, it's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. It's not quite as long as before, but we're getting there. But I wanted uh, you guys to notice how the, the light and the dark shapes, where they come together and where they're different. I thought it was interesting that when you're looking at just his body, for example, you've got this dark shadow which helps to sort of support this arm coming forward here on both sides. Um, having that dark shadow fall on both sides with that in the middle. Again, it's just very like visually striking. Um, but notice too how when we get to his face, and I absolutely love the shadows on his face. And again, I don't want to do anything in my coloring to fight these shapes because these shapes are incredible. Uh, I, I was looking at this and trying to figure out, it was, it's interesting to me, and I don't know if everybody else finds this interesting or not, but if you look at just how strongly, if you compare, let's see, how, how can I, right, let me find a place I can compare this. But if you look at this, there's nowhere on his body where you get the, the big chunky blacks next to the completely white spaces on his skin. You don't see a whole lot of that, except on his face. 
and you get these big chunky shapes which are just great they're sort of here and here like this sort of shape what you've got here effectively is it's kind of like this shape it, I'm, I'm, i've simplified it obviously like his nose is in there but what was fascinating to me about this is how he's able to get that light you know light dark light light dark light light dark light at you know three different places you know the the shadow from his nose the shadow from his eyes like they're creating these nice big like repeatable chunky shapes of black and white um and i don't know does that make sense when i talk about chunky shapes like if i say that if i do this and say like that's black and white like those aren't chunky shapes to me but if i do this you say oh, okay yeah these are what I, I call like chunky shapes like it's like if we take the average of this area it's like half white and half black but if we do this it's like there's a lot more white not quite as much black if we zoom way off of this the bigger shapes are just easier to see because they're bigger <laughs> they're chunkier so when I talk about like chunky shapes that's what I'm talking about you don't really get chunky shadow shapes on him anywhere else other than his head and that's intentional it's almost like a punisher skull it is it's almost exactly like a punisher skull um because that's well i mean it is that's what we're looking at <laughs> yeah if you were to yeah, you know, his skull would look interesting in this, but but that's effectively what he's what he's drawn here. Like you've got the like the brows of the skull here. This comes down. You've got the two eye sockets. The only difference, the thing that would make this uh, look more like a a Punisher logo was if there was like you know, it was just two holes instead of where his nose is. <laughs> but other than that, yeah. But yeah, shockingly, Chris, there's a skull in there, and it looks like a skull. <laughs> People that don't know this stream are like, man, this guy's a dick to Chris. Chris is my friend. It's okay. I think it's okay. <laughs> are you with me so far? I would like to see you coloring something completely different than what we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Um, questions, comments, concerns so far that have... Anything to do with what I'm talking about? You have been roasted? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Whoops. I forgot to do this. Why is that doing that? Oh, I was trying to do some other stuff yesterday. There we go. Under the lines. That would be preferable. All right, you guys with me so far? Nobody has any questions. Everybody's everybody's good. You guys are all experts. But anyway, um, what else? So we've established where I want to be lighter and I want to be darker. So when I start deciding what colors I'm going to choose, I want to make sure that I can maintain that. Okay. The smaller shadows on his arms, do those count as chunky shapes? Um, the, you're talking about like this? So here, here's the difference. This is important. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. I'm going to expound on this a little bit more. Because if you're not getting what I'm saying now, then the rest of this is going to make any sense. So are you talking about like, for example, this little chunk there? Is that what we're talking about? Or like that? Maybe? So... The difference is, let's say, like, take this shape, for example. Look at what's immediately around it, okay? So we basically have a, a dark shape that is surrounded effectively by a mid-tone, okay? Because of all of the hair. You know, it's like the hair basically, you can imagine the hair acting as like little, what are those little uh, screen tones or whatever, you know? It, it's effectively giving us a different value through the texture. You know what I'm saying? 
And so you're comparing a, a dark shape against a slightly darker shape. Okay. So the impact of this little spot is not very big. Okay. Because one, it's right next to all this black. It's surrounded by hair. It's on the edge of the image, you know, so that's not the kind of shape that's going to draw your attention because the things that it's surrounded by are similar to itself. You know, the thing is surrounded by stuff <laughs> and the stuff is not that quite that different from the thing there. That, that, that's there. There's a, there's a high level scientific explanation. Um, uh, same thing here. Again, these little dark spots are surrounded by a bunch of little dark spots, you know, and so they don't have the same impact. Now, if I had gone in here and said, well, I really want this shadow to be impactful and I decide to like do this. I mean, this is a ridiculous idea, but I'm just saying like, do you see now how that shadow on his forearm like comes forward way more just because it's unlike or it's unlike what's around it. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> so, but that's the difference in those little chunky shapes and these chunky shapes is because these shapes are surrounded by, you know, the white of the paper, okay? And so to, to simplify this like one more time, like just to sort of beat this completely into the ground, so like here's an eye and here's an eye and here's his nose and here's the shape of his cheeks, right? So like if I do that, uh, you know, if I had gone in and let's say started putting in a whole bunch of other lines or textures or something, like it, it still looks interesting, but it's not as striking because, you know, the area around uh, all of these little shapes are they're all, you know, they're all similar to each other. Uh, and in this case, in Wolverine's case, this is one of the few areas on his body that doesn't have hair, <laughs> you know? And so it works out. Contrast. Yes, that's right. We never talk about contrast. <laughs> it's all contrast. Anyway, does that answer your question though? I need a doctor to understand this. I don't, I don't know. I think you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but anyway, what else can we say about this? Yes, thank you. Awesome. But yeah, like that's to me what's so impressive about this composition is just, you know, even in the area like immediately surrounding his head, you know, it's either, you know, completely white or it's this texture of you know, his hair against his skin, but there's almost, there's almost nothing else of like visual interest in this box, you know, because again, he wants you to focus on his head. And so he's supporting his head with just enough detail to make it similar. So that his head breaks that, that pattern. Um, you know, by having his shoulders and arms and all this stuff covered in, in all this stuff, it really creates a big value difference. And it, even having the big, you know, the, 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 the hair on both sides of his face helps to draw that, draw that attention. But so if I'm going to choose colors based on this plan, let's say I go in and I grab this and uh, I don't think this is perfectly gray or is it perfectly gray? It is. I'm going to add a little bit of, a color to this so I can change the uh, saturation level. So anyway, we're going to grab his skin. And uh, and by the way, just to show you, let me come over here real quick. Um, not that. So this is where this image actually started uh, in a similar place. I, I experimented a bunch with this, by the way. Ignore all the, all the layers. But um, so when I take this plan, and I go in and I set up my base colors. And these are the base colors that I chose for this when I started. So the one thing that, I, that you'll notice right off the bat is my plan is intact, okay? My, uh, if, I, if I look at this in black and white, I have a light background and a dark foreground. So 
even this stage, a lot of people get stuck at this stage based on the comments that I see on my videos. Uh, you know, how did you decide on your base colors to even start? I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. This is how I got there <laughs> was that I knew I wanted darker values to begin with in him and on the tree and i wanted lighter back you know in the background that significantly narrows my color choices for both of those you know because you can kind of think of it as the first color you put down whether it's light dark or whatever let's say in this case it's the background the first color you choose you're i look at it as sort of a uh, like a base starting point and then all the other colors sort of are pulled uh, out of that. You know, you can think of, you know, these darker colors adding tension, you know, to the, to the drawing. Because we've got all light, now we're adding dark. Now, so by having that plan, I've kind of got two ranges now where I know I'm limited that act as like, you know when you're bowling? You know when you're bowling with with like kids and they put those little uh, safety things in the gutters so all the kids' balls don't go in the gutters. That's kind of how you. To me, it's sort of like you have some guide rails on how dark and how light things can be. Because if I choose, uh, let's see, where am I at on this? Let me, well, let me go back to this one. If if I go back to my original drawing here and say, okay, I want this to be uh, a, a nice bright background, and I do that. Well, does it feel bright? <laughs> you know, it doesn't feel bright. It's, it, it's not a very bright color compared to that blue, and I, and I don't have a... Uh, there's not enough difference, you know, between the, the foreground and the background. Uh, what's fun about this pose and composition is the fact that it's almost symmetrical but slightly unbalanced. It doesn't look like he can stay there for long and is set to jump at us. I think that's all intentional, obviously. Like it, I mean, it is intentional, obviously. But um, in in this case, like it's one of the things that I played around with just in working on this idea that, for this video today um, is the idea of like if I got rid of that last shadow. Like, it really starts to feel like this thing's about to snap. You know what I mean? Like, it's weighted so perfectly. <laughs> you know, exactly like what you're saying. Because it's like those little black shadows are seem to be doing a lot. You know? But, um, but does that make sense, though, like, initially as far as, like... Because I, I do see a lot of begin, beginner colorist work on my Discord. And the... To me, separating your planes is always, it should be very high on your list of, of things you're trying to accomplish, you know? And so, if you're, you, you're never just deciding on one color, you know what I mean? Like, every color you choose fits, you know, within whatever the spectrum is for that particular piece. And it doesn't mean it's going to work again on the next one if the spectrum is different, you know? Does that make sense? Anyway, so having this this plan up front tells me that, well, I can't really get, if I want this to be lighter, then I've got a limit of about that dark or, you know, as bright as I want to get. But it, it acts as a, uh, as a limit on how bright I can get. And by the same token, I've got a limit now on how bright he can be. Because if I start brightening him, then he's going to start blending into the background. So when I'm choosing my base colors for him, I know that I at least want there to be enough difference that he stands out from the background. I know this is like, this might seem very elementary to some of you, and some of you it might seem complicated, but hopefully it's the simplicity of this is the point that I'm trying to get across. Where can you find my Discord? Uh, I will, I'll put a... I'll put a link in the description. Uh, invite. Expire in a week. And there we go. Yeah, give me a second. Uh, we'll put it in the description. 
right under the link that gives you 50% off all of my coloring courses. <laughs> I'll put it right there. There we go. But no, you're right. He feels like a coiled spring. You know what I mean? Like a snake. Like, where did my, uh, where did my thing go? All right. Everybody with me? Any other questions about any of that stuff? Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> they, uh, YouTube is hiding your comment. I guess it seems like spam. Oh, I didn't mean to delete it. I don't want to delete it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. I went to approve your message, Marta, and I hit it by accident. Have a great one. Yeah, take care, guys. Yeah, smash the like button, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and see what I did at this point. So looking at these base colors, again, they're kind of all mid-tones for the most part. That's about as dark as I usually want to get. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe quote from Marta. There you go. Now, uh, on the background on this, uh, I ended up doing just this, which is just sort of a, uh, just kind of a washy, uh, you know, uh, texture. I, and even this, uh, again, I'm keeping that area above his head very, very bright. Okay. Um, because this is, I mean, it's a bright color. Don't get me wrong. Like that, that, that yellow is still very bright, but it's not as bright as what we're seeing at the top. And let's see what else is in here. Oh, there's like the rest of the owl. Um, no, this is all just, this is all just rendering. If I get really close to this, you can see, um, there's, uh, I chose kind of a greenish yellow again, because the background's yellow. Excuse me. And I just rendered the crap out of this, is what I did. Over, I don't know, maybe an hour or so. Um, because I'm looking at this, I'm going, all right, Sam put a lot of detail into this, and the color should match. And so I did a whole bunch of rendering. But again, like, none of this rendering is affecting the basic shape. Again, that original big, you know, foreground shape there's brighter colors in there but i'm not breaking any of these edges you know his body against the background the tree against the background all that stuff still the same uh what is this more rendering uh this time on the tree uh what is it darkening him a little bit yeah there was a whole lot of uh me trying stuff out on this one <laughs> but um but yeah effectively it didn't really change that much Oh, this, oh, but this is just a gradient map. I ended up putting on here because I was like, this is not warm enough. And so I put a gradient map. It uh, starts bright and ends red, you know. Put that in soft light mode and on top and it basically is tinting everything. And then what else? Uh, that. Do any of these things have anything on them or did I just put a bunch of blank layers in here? <laughs> oh, there's the ketchup layer. Yeah, that's ketchup, guys. Family friendly. Uh, now, I did a version here just to... And this is a quick adjustment. <laughs> but just to show, like, well, what if... You don't want to listen to me. I want it to be nighttime. Cool. So I did this. And all I did here was put a dark color on the background. That kind of bluish green color and then put a, uh, what is that, a hue saturation levels adjustment on this. That's basically it. And then just painted it away from right there. Yeah. So basically I took all the yellows, shifted them to blue, and then painted it away slightly around his skin. But I wanted to point out though, this feels like a very different drawing to me. Obviously the tone's completely different, but 
to me, you really, you lose the detail. Again, you lose the detail on the little hanging things. You lose the detail in his hair. Um, I'm not as, as big of a fan of this version, but I wanted just to show that, yeah, you can put together a cool thing, you know, without working too hard. But uh, but anyway, this is the final. This is what it ended up looking like. And I tried to, uh, again, stick within those original guidelines that I had set up as far as making sure that when I zoom out on this, uh, zoom out on this. Um, why is that not zooming out? There we go. I've still got my, my triangular shape there, which is, you know, the broadest possible way to read this. But anyway, um, questions, comments, interesting, not interesting. Tell me something. Love the way the ketchup layer looks. Yeah, it's just a hard light layer. Um, and I used, uh, I used that textury brush I've got. That's what it looks like though. Perfect. I I don't know if it's perfect, but to me, like, I was honestly I was thinking about Simon Bisley. Uh his his style of rendering when I was working on this it wasn't really I realized about halfway through that I may have been channeling him unintentionally. <laughs> but but yeah, you really could detail this all day. Like I spent a I didn't spend as much time as it looked like I spent on this, but um, but that's where it ended up. But anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy that little explanation today. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I don't know if it worked or not. But um, anyway, find something else to do today. <laughs> I do actually have some work to do, and I think we're going to start on that. And I'm going to uh, let's see best way to find evening backgrounds and how it affects the figures. Uh, what do you mean? Like how how would it like how yeah, what now? Try it one more time. <laughs> Asking your opinion. Do you think four days a page is all right? Hey, some of them. Some of them take four days, sure. I mean, you're asking me if it's all right? Yeah, it's all right. As long as you don't have anyone else's deadline to worry about, <laughs> you know? Thanks for the explanation, looks amazing. Thank you, Angela. All right, cool. All right, so... Let me see if I can find something to work on. My blue flame pages I've got are a little spoilery. A little spoilery. So I don't know if I want to do that or not. And I'm going to edit the name of this thing since we're done with that part. And I'll, I'll push this back in <laughs> when I'm done. Best color schemes to color nighttime scenes. Um, I mean, there's really, there, there's not, there are no rules for that at all. You know, you want your nighttime to be red or blue or purple or green or, you know, in, in any way, any way you want it, it'll, it'll work. <laughs> I mean, in general, I heard some artists done a page a day. Yeah, I mean, the, the goal, if your goal is to draw comic books for someone else and have them published, then yeah, like you're gonna do a page or two a day. Like, I mean, most I mean most guys shoot for a page a day, you know. And then there's some really fast guys that maybe do two. <laughs> and then there's some pages. They're always outliers. Don't forget about that. There are pages that take way less. There, there are 
you know, really good established experienced artist that might take two or three days or four days to draw, a, you know, a double page spread with, you know, 80 guys fighting horses on it or whatever, you know, but, uh, but if you're asking me like, it, you know, is, is, is four days a page, like a good average, like, I mean, it's a good, if you're just starting out. But no, you wouldn't be able to hit a deadline doing that. You know what I mean? If you were working for somebody else. That's the point. But if you're working for yourself, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I know you primarily do color, but what do you think is a good pace looks like when you're going when you're doing the whole process from writing to coloring by yourself? I have no idea. Don't know. Don't I don't do it regularly enough to have an answer for you. Would you ever make a video on the business of comic making? Um, no, probably not. I mean, why don't I, I don't, I don't have experience in the business of, of comic making. If you're talking about like Kickstarters and stuff like that, like I don't, you know, I have no experience in it whatsoever. So you don't want to hear that from me. I don't think. <laughs> oh, splash water in my eye. All right, let me see if I can find a book to work on. Ooh, none of those are ready yet. Like getting, oh, to find work. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what people do anymore. Like, I mean, every, it's all on Discord and stuff. Like, I mean, the way that you like get into finding work is all very different from what it was when I started. And so, I mean, it's not that different, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 like, there's no, like if there was like a, a you know, uh, what do you call it? If there was a formula, it's like if you take step one, two, three, four, and then you'll get a job, like I would tell you, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> My advice for everyone trying to get started is always the same. I've, I've given it, I've given it a lot on this channel, but I'll say it again. Uh, start working. Like you just have to start on something. Um, and I say work like you're getting paid. Um, but so no, uh, but no, to start off with, you just need to make some stuff. You need to make some pages, um, have a portfolio at minimum. Uh, you have to have a portfolio of some kind. Um, it doesn't have to be a ton of pages. Eight, 10 pages is plenty. Uh, but you know, this is a job where you learn on the job for the most part, you know? And so, um, That would be my advice though, is just to find some like-minded people and make some, make a few, make a few pages and then keep doing that until somebody wants to pay you for it. <laughs> Loved your colors on the Wolverine color jam. Is that reflected light from his claws coming back on his left hand? Uh, yeah, it actually was. I, I did think about that and decided to dress that up a little bit. Sorry, I was trying to find something to work on for this stream. And I thought I had sent some pages to my flatter, but I forgot. And so I don't have them back. You have to send them if you want them back. So my original plan for this stream is off the rails. We can do a... Maybe we change this to a big FAQ. An AMA. That's what they. That's what the kids call it. Ask me anything. Uh, how much time does a publisher give an artist to finish a regular twenty-two page comic? Best work under press. Um, 
I mean, usually get a get a month, four or five weeks, usually, in my experience. Maybe a little more if you've got more time up front. But yeah, four or five weeks is, like I said, page a day. That's a pretty good pace. I tell you what, I'm going to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Ex what do I want? Yeah, let's do this. You have so many flat pages here. I practice it. That's good. Pra flatting is good um, practice for just using a lasso and all that stuff. Yeah, I think before I uh, get to give this like one other like kind of angle and a very, very different type of cover, uh, like this cover or this, yeah, this Wolverine cover, um, I think this was a cover, um, is, you know, very straightforward with the simple background and the big character. And so there's only, you can't, it's hard to screw this up. Um, this is not the right file. Hold on one second. <laughs> Let me find. Is that it? Excuse me. What if you wanted to do an energy aura on Wolverine? Yeah, I don't think he has any of those. Uh, nope, that's not it either. Well, one of these files is the right file. I'll just get the final file. It doesn't really matter. So I, I, I want to I quickly, uh, just so we'll have two examples of two different, very different color covers. Maybe that was the right one. So... Let's do this and that. When you want to show sequentials, how many pages is a good number? Um, I would say like six, eight, ten, somewhere in that range. Let's move this over here and move this over here. So in this drawing, the values are doing most of the work, okay? There, there's not a ton of difference in the actual hues themselves. We've got some yellows, you know, we've got yellows into oranges getting into reds, and even the tree, and even the quote-unquote green of this, of this stuff is barely green, but, you know, kind of a limey green uh, with some yellow in it. So, like, the whole palette for this entire... Uh, drawing from a color standpoint really only goes from about there to there. <laughs> you know, there's not a, there's not some, you know, there's not a whole lot of differences in the hues because the values are doing most of the heavy lifting, you know. Um, the, uh, the white background, the dark foreground, again, we've covered that. In this one, the hues are doing a whole lot more work on this one than I mean, there's some, obviously there's some value differences here, but in this case, I just wanted to show you guys another way of looking at it. So in this particular cover, let me make this big enough. There we go. From a, strictly from a color theory standpoint, that's what I want to try to look at and explain this. So let's say that that's my cover. So this one started um, basically red. Now, if I want to separate the foreground from the background, and again, in this case, the foreground is like this building and the character. The difference with this cover that the other one doesn't have is that the, the actual character is very small on the page. And so... If I had only, you know, said, uh, you know, pick some other color, like this green or whatever, and did this, like, 
that's its own look, <laughs> you know? It's not particularly striking or anything. It's not particularly powerful uh, because it's so small on the page. And so in this case, what I did was take that whole foreground and make it green. And so you, what that does is you end up with, um, let's do that. What you end up with is the bottom is acting as a brighter value and the red is actually acting as a darker value. And then you got these little shapes here. But like at its core, this is what makes that color or that cover, uh, I would say like visually striking is just the, the differences in the reds and the greens. And so what I did then to separate, let's say that where this character is versus the greens at the bottom, there are lots of bright values. There are some yellows, some whites and, and all this kind of stuff that you see on the character, these really bright, bright values. And again, they really only appear, you know, right around the character, those really bright, and again, I'm just kind of roughing this in, um, really bright values that don't show up anywhere else on the image. <laughs> it's the, like, the uniqueness of that yellow next to the green, like, it only happens there. You know, there's very little of that. There's a little yellow down here, but not very much. But the brightest parts of that are really only bright right where that character's head is. Um, all of these characters in the background or all these tentacles in the background, I mean, sure, there's a ton of detail in that. Tons and tons of detail. But it's not a huge color range. You know, you, you've got some bright reds into some deep purples, you know. And so effectively, the entire background is just right there, you know, between that red and that purple. Purple at the top, fading into the, the red at the bottom, and then, uh, you know, a couple of these orange uh, eyeballs thrown around in there just to make sure we see them. But it's very, very simple. I actually, I kind of accidentally used every color in the rainbow on this one uh, because there's, uh, there's the deep uh, blues or these deep purples or whatever are down here and a little bit up at the top. But you've got red, orange, yellow, green, you know, they're all there. But, uh, so anyway, the concept is the same though, where I want that shape to read, okay? So the shape is heavily separated in the hues, red and green, and then the green is separated from light to dark, up and down. I know this is a really simple way of looking at it, and a lot, what I found in, in uh, what I found with color theory is that it's almost always overcomplicated in your head. I saw a discussion yesterday on Twitter, and somebody said, "I'm never going to figure out color," and I always hate to see stuff like that because I feel like I've failed <laughs> at that point. I'm like, never. <laughs> There's not a single. I've done 250 videos, none of them. No, I'm kidding. But um, anyway, I really like that cover. Matt Smith drew that, by the way. Questions, comments, concerns about anything. Today's show is already off the rails. It's not complicated. There's just so little people like you who know how to actually explain it. Thank you, Marta. I appreciate that. I, I, I do think that it's extremely overcomplicated most of the time. Um, hold on one second, guys. We have a visitor. Hey, Aramis. Where is my camera? Hold on. My wife just brought. Let's see. Where is that it? There we go. 
We have a <laughs> we have a little buddy today. He's gonna like pee right now as I'm holding him on the camera, probably. He's he is cute. <laughs> he is so cute. He's spunky too. He's, He's very spunky. Yeah, that's nice. There we go. Bonus. <laughs> I've always wanted to be Jack Hanna. <laughs> <laughs> now this animal, highly poisonous. Yeah, we're gonna go to. We're gonna become an animal show. <laughs> oh yes. I like. I like. We have. A, I technically live in the city of Long Beach, but we have a lot of critters around here. <laughs> uh, hey German, how's it going? Uh, I did all of my lettering in Photoshop, but the printer told me to do it in Designs. So that's my day. Yeah, yeah, uh, or Illustrator. Uh, it, it, Illustrator is, is like the, the lettering thing, right? Or is it InDesign? I thought it was Illustrator. I don't know anything. Yeah, weird cat. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, look, guys, I don't have anything to color today that I can show um, and nothing really prepared. So I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. I can do demos. I will talk about whatever you guys want to talk about for the next hour. Um, but I, my plan, uh, for, uh, the rest of the stream is, is, I, I can't believe I didn't send those pages to get flatted. I don't think I've ever done that before. Uh, Illustrator. InDesign should be used more to compile the pages that come out Illustrator. That's, that's my understanding too. I'm pretty sure Illustrator is the lettering thing because of the vector stuff. The cat looks filled with Wolverine. Oh, did y'all did y'all see Aramis in here? Was he in here? I didn't see him. So yeah, it's up to y'all. Uh, I can take questions, or we can wrap up today's stream early. I'm I'm down for whatever. What's what's in design? It's an app. It's a it's a book building app Adobe makes, I believe. Can you show all the layers? I mean, I did too many layers on this because I was just trying a bunch of stuff. Usually when I have uh, something like this where I'm just doing it for fun, I tend to uh, just try a bunch of crazy stuff. Uh, but I'll show you how this one came together if you want. Um, flats started here. Oh, there's some other stuff on top of this, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, the flat started there. And then we did, uh, then I did a little background. A little rendering. A little more rendering. Uh, this, what I did, uh, so at this stage, I thought he looked a little dead, not alive. His skin was, there wasn't enough warmth, basically. And so this is uh, just an overlay layer that is leaning it a little bit warmer. You kind of see that. M mostly around, uh, you know, the shadows, transition area, stuff like that. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Yeah, some of this, yeah, was just like shifting. Like I threw some yellow on top of the tree to blend that a little bit. Yeah, a bunch of little fixes. But, but yeah, there's nothing really too exciting in this rendering stack. Um, this is actually doing a lot of, of a lot of the work in tinting everything. Is this gradient map? Um, all of the uh, darker colors I've got set to uh, blend with that red and then the bright with the yellow. Uh, that's in soft light mode, so it, it does a good job of just uh, kind of warming everything up. Uh, and then everything else is uh, that's adjustments that don't really matter. But yeah, I mean, the layers, the layers are, don't worry about the layers. I, I, I could have done this on three layers. It's just, I didn't. <laughs> uh, looks great. Thank you, Lord Crackhead. Uh, do you ever work in a more simplified style? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, question. Some comic books use flat colors like Matt Hollingsworth, and it's really good. 
how do you think he pulled that off really good? Um, well, number one is to have really good artists to work with. And uh, that helps a ton. Um, and then also um, the, the, the style of the line art factors in heavily. You know, what Matt's doing flat, it's not like he could do that on like Jorge Jimenez and have it look as good. Like it wouldn't, I don't think, not even close, you know. Like it, it works, like the, the flatter stuff I'm thinking about, like Tokyo, well, that's not even that flat. It's flattish. But like, um, what's the one uh, with the Hawkeye? I know it's is a big one. Um, but yeah, it's like, he pulls it off because it works. He knows when to do it. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, it's like he's not coloring seven to eternity that way because it wouldn't work, you know? So a lot of that is, and how he pulls it off is just making good decisions about projects. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's in like his, uh, like his stuff on Sean Gordon Murphy, like the Batman stuff. Um, it's flat-ish because there's so much value in the line art. You know what I mean? <clears throat> because this is all, I mean, this is all my opinion. You ask Matt, he might tell you something different. I don't know. But um, but if you look at like, let's see, let me find one of these pages. Let's see. I'm trying to find an example. One of the interiors. A lot of people like to color Sean Gordon for fun. <laughs> so there's some finding a lot of that. Let's see. Let me add Hollingsworth's name on here. <laughs> maybe that'll maybe that'll get rid of everybody else trying to be him. Uh da, 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 da. A lot of covers, a lot of covers. Ah, here's one. I mean, simple page, but. But pages like this, again, like, and this is not completely flat, but it's, it's, it's flat-ish rendering. Um, there's just, look at all the black. You know what I mean? There's tons and tons and tons of, of, of shadows on this. And so, you know, there's no need to, like, pick some dark shadow color value. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, like, it's it's being used. <laughs> like, it's it's out of the picture because of the black lines. Um, and so, just keep that in mind. Like, flat works when it works. Is that, is there there you go put that on a on a plaque it works when it works <laughs> uh anyway any other questions i did a book called the plot that was very very simple for the same reason it was uh a whole bunch of shadows there already. A lot of lot of values in the lines. And so again, like it just it simplifies what the colorist should be doing when that happens. Like the latest Iron Man comics, uh, there's a ton of values in the line art. What is value? Value is a uh, the relative brightness or darkness of an object or a or a color or whatever i wish i could just flatten my stuff save so much time you can always flat your own stuff i prefer to have someone else flat my stuff <laughs> yeah no value is a um whoops when you're talking about um 
color. Color can, can only be described in three different ways. Since there are some newer people in here. So like if I go down the, the gray spectrum here, so like this is the range of value from light to dark going up and down the color wheel. So that's one of the variables you can use. When you choose a color, you're also choosing a value, you know? So like even if I choose that green and put this down, like it has its own value. So like if I put this in black and white just to show you, well, the value of that green is very gray, so I'll darken it some. There we go. So, for example, in this case, that green equates to, like, uh, you know, the darker end of the spectrum, okay? That's value. Now, you also have the saturation level, which goes left and right. But you can also have differences and saturation levels just like you can, you know, value, you know. So even though I'm going right across, I feel like I just did this demo not too long ago, but going right across the color wheel, the value, quote unquote, is staying the same, but it's not. But as I'm adding more saturation, I'm also getting a little bit darker, you know. So that's another aspect of color. And then the last one is just the, the hue wheel. And color is about balancing all three of those things across your image. So it's like you can have a drawing that is, let's say, very bright. And then whatever it is that you're doing on it that's important is black. And that gives you like a big range of, of, of value there. And, you know, I could separate this out into its own little, you know, composition using nothing but values. And then we can do the same thing, let's say, with only changing saturation levels, you know? So it's like I could pick like a, I don't know, color about like that. And I could have parts of it that are, you know, none of this is, all this is about 50% gray. But, um, but as I increase the saturation, then I've got a focal point here in this drawing just from being more saturated than everything else, you know? That's your piece of cake video about color theory? Yeah, I guess it is. I'm kind of repeating myself, but but it's just, it's color theory is all about measuring the distances and weighing the differences between the colors that you're choosing because you're, you're never, ever, ever, under any circumstance, choosing a color out of context of the rest of the piece. You know what I mean? It's like, if I'm choosing this little bright value on his bicep, I'm not just choosing that color. Like, I'm, I'm looking at that color and I'm comparing it to the colors that are right next to it. And it's like, so if I'm gonna start adding more, let me just make this really bright here. So if I wanna start adding more highlights to this, then I'm picking colors that I can't see, apparently. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. So like, but when I choose this color, I'm looking at the colors next to it. I'm looking at all the rest of the colors in the whole image, you know, to, to find the value that does what I need it to do at that point. You, you never ever just choose a color out of, you know, without thinking about the entire rest of the canvas and where it fits in, you know. When I'm deciding on how bright this area of his peck is, you know, I'm comparing it to the colors right next to it. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not thinking about it in terms of, oh, this is my highlight for this painting. Like, it's just the highlight for that area. You know, the, uh, to, to pull this back up one more time, is because again, there's a lot of good examples of this on there. Um, like, look at the tentacles on this thing, for example. Like, every one of these tentacles is, I mean, these in the front are all pretty similar, but the colors are different. You know, I mean, there's some, there's some darker reds, there's some brighter red, there's some really deep purples back here. And in each one of those, it's like to do the highlights on this 
tentacle, I only need to worry about the difference in that purple and how bright I need that value to read, you know? Because what might be a good highlight color here, you know, like if I were to come in here and say, I want to make this look even more uh, slimy, and I'm going to start putting like little white, uh, you know, specular highlights everywhere and try to make this look like, like it's gooey or something. You know what I mean? Well, that works there because of the difference between that color and the red. But if I go to a different part of the image and try to do the same uh, color, which is like really, really bright, like that color doesn't seem to fit this particular tentacle because the range is too big, you know? And so like when I get to this area, I'm just getting a little bit brighter than everything else to make those, to make those highlights excuse me, uh, to make those highlights because why is that coming out so pink? There we go. But anyway, but I'm looking at all of those little areas in the context that they're in. You know what I mean? I only ever flat my own stuff. Not sure how sustainable that is though. I don't, I mean, you know my opinion on that. <laughs> Which I just like to me, I, I I can't find a scenario where it almost ever makes sense to flat myself. That Wolverine, don't you use the pen tool to select and paint with airbrush? Only you paint. I, I don't use a pen tool for anything. Um. Usually, if I'm making selections, it's with a magic wand. Um, like in this case. I'll use a wand to select like his skin or just the tree or whatever from the flats, but. The bigger the muscle, is it the bigger the muscle, the brighter the highlight? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, Why would you think? Oh, I guess because in this particular drawing it is. No, in this case, I knew I wanted there to be a good line because, I mean, how can I put this? I don't talk about this a lot because it's hard to talk about. Um, <laughs> it's just difficult to explain to me. Um, but I'm sort of like, there's the bit of, I mean, I talked about the triangle and I talked about like these big black shadow shapes. Um, but there's also a little bit of like this thing going on here to me, like starting at the base of this tree, you know, into the character around his hand. Like I, I visualize sort of a flow happening through here, you know, and especially with him feeling like he's a coiled snake here anyway. But my thought process was, for the people that land on his head, you got these bright highlights here going down his arm, a couple of bright ones there, a couple of bright ones down here. And that creates a bit of a, of just a line of whatever that is, <laughs> just the flow, I guess. Um, and the reason it's only there is if I had said, okay, well, I want him to, you know, look like this. Well, like now that bicep highlight is not special anymore, <laughs> you know? And so it just becomes a bunch of random, you know, dots, you know? And so um, that that was intentional. Um, I did say I wanted to look at some of the other color jams and one of them I got permission to do like a, a little critique on. And so I'm gonna pull that in here real quick. And we're gonna look at some of these things hashtag color jam latest and let's grab a few of these and I'm not doing like full critiques on all of these like these people didn't ask for it but uh, there is one guy that did um, and I figure we can point out what's cool about these and what's similar about them and, oh, that's mine. I'm like, that one looks just like, yeah, it is mine. Um, and then, uh, this one is by, uh, 
a gentleman named Jack on my Discord. He said I could we could do feedback with him. He didn't care, so we'll do that. And we got one from Rico. I think that's Rico's. Yep, Rico Renzi. We got a couple of these. It's the similarities in these are what is what really to me is where you can start to learn um, some of this stuff. But yeah, that should give us enough to look at. And if you want to, let's see, where is, oh, we'll get this one too. Why not? All right, where did y'all go? I've lost the chat. All right. So this one, uh, again, look at the similarities as far as like, again, we have simple background, dark foreground. The basics are similar. You know, the, the color choices are different, but the value choices are not that different. You know what I mean? So that's a very cool one. Cool as in cool daddy-o. This one is actually cool. <laughs> Um, this person did some more painting in the background, which is, that is a choice you can make. I wouldn't do that to Sam Keith personally, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, but notice again, the background is actually more saturated here and he is less saturated. I, I like this one just for that reason is why I chose it is just because I I've, I've gotten questions, you know, based on general guidelines I've given before about, you know, do this and that. And, and remembering that almost always the inverse and opposite of what I'm saying is also true, <laughs> you know? And so that's what I think about when I thought about this one is it's a good example of, it's not always the brightest thing or the most saturated thing. It's the most unique thing, the most different thing. And so in this case, you've got a saturated background and He's unique and different from that because he's less saturated, you know? So just remember that these differences work both directions. They don't have to be, you know, it's not always the dark thing or the light thing or whatever. It can go either way. Um, this one is from Jack. Now, he told me I could give him, a, a, you know, full feedback on this if I wanted to. Um, and so uh, he's the only one I have permission from. And so we're going to do some pros and cons on this one. Um, first off... To me, and this is one of the things that I realized in um, starting mine, do you see how tough it is to see what's happening underneath that log? Okay. You can't see Keith's signature either. <laughs> so that's an area that I, I think this is dark. It's on the dark side anyway. Like, it's pretty dark. Um, but... I do like how in the big differences, obviously they're there. Like he's got his, his colors on Wolverine against the colors on the background. Um, but I would be careful about how dark you're getting because some of this stuff is just going to print really, really, really muddy. Um, I would say your monitor might be too bright, possibly. Which one of these is? One of these is all right. Yeah, like this art, the CMYK and clip is not great but this is showing you like it's it's very very dark in the background um the other thing on this one that i wanted to point out i do like all the different uh like i said he, he really comes forward on the on the page uh, quite well um but to me the the shape of the the lighting is a little distracting on the character itself because you know, kind of what I talked about earlier, these big shapes on his face are clean and clear and sharp and right next to those big black shapes uh, on purpose. And it makes this part of his body unique in the drawing. Okay, if we again, we go back and look at the original drawing, there's almost nowhere else other than his face where you get just the skin next to these big deep shadows, you know, without a whole lot of hair. And so whenever you take those shapes and then basically duplicate them, I would say, 
you know, with these, the big chunky shapes here and here and here. And uh, to me, it sort of becomes about all the little lumps of muscles, you know? And so there, there's, there's more contrast being created in his arms that is not present in the drawing. And to, so to me, this one sort of fights the line art a little bit because of that. Um, and the original shapes are a little bit harder to find because of the differences in, you know, like I said, especially down here under, under there. Um, so when you, when you go to color something, I do know you're, I do know Jack is new to this, but I would just say that, um, whenever you get too, if you get too caught up in just thinking about it very, how am I, what am I trying to say? Very like, methodically or mechanically like I'm gonna call it this muscle this muscle this muscle like you treat all those the same you can kind of lose sight of the the big picture you know but um it's much better than my first drawings or colorings that I'll tell you uh this was by Rico Renzi again I love this one but you can see he's got that real bright gradient in the background uh even this down here at the bottom again it's it's uh it's darker than the top, but it's not really a dark color. Um, and then he is very dark, and so you get that that big. It's the again the difference between the background and the foreground is big. Um, and I like how like the rendering on him. There's a lot of colors in there. There's yellows and reds and purples and all these things, but the values are all very very similar. You know. And because Rico knows it's the shape, it's Wolverine's shape is what makes this. And so if we look at this in, again, we look at this in black and white, you can see just how similar all those values really are, you know, on Wolverine. So sure, there's purples and oranges and reds and yellows and all those things, but they're in a very narrow range of value because he wants to maintain that shape. If I that's the whole point of this stream today. If you guys don't take away anything else from what I'm saying, is to don't fight the shapes. Like learn to, you know, work with the shapes. <laughs> like this one. This is so cool. Again, like just super impactful. Again, on this one, it's more about the hues, you know, more about the hues than the values. Because the values are all probably in a pretty similar range. Yeah, if you look at this one in black and white, obviously you've got the glows on his claws and his head's a little brighter. But the value range on this is very, very narrow. Does that mean it's wrong? No. It just means that instead of using value as the primary contrast machine, they're using the difference in red and green. Or blue and green or whatever colors these are. Red and teal. <laughs> because the value differences don't matter when the hue differences are that big because we're literally talking about opposite sides of the color wheel you know so it's not about specifically how you're creating the differences as long as you're creating the differences you guys are quiet so either i've lost you or um or you're listening <laughs> some someone give me some feedback tell me something does this all make sense This is a cool one too. I'm not crazy about the texture, but that's just me. That's an interesting one. Very, very bright. It's tough to work with perfectly gray or what seems to be almost gray. But yeah, you guys get the idea, hopefully. listening yeah you guys it's, it's so funny to me like it's actually like a class sometimes everyone's quiet listening no one's saying anything no one's raising their hand <laughs> i just joined what's the topic uh we're, we're talking about uh shapes color shapes value shapes contrast the usual the usual stuff <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Can I go to the bathroom now? <laughs> yeah, exactly.
what other questions you guys got today? Anything else? Any particularly confusing coloring questions before we wrap this up today? Uh, thanks for going over this. I'm still learning this as I go along with my artwork. Cool. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I've started doing some very rough, uh, I've started doing some sketching and planning, um, and writing down some ideas for this book that I'm going to make at some point. Um, I do have a, I do have plans to make some comics in the next year <laughs> at some point. Always confused. Not always. Not always. Uh, I did not go to art school. Um, I've been drawing since birth. <laughs> no, I started at a very young age. I started drawing very, very, very young, as soon as I could hold something. And I just never stopped, basically. Metallic type object coloring tips. Do, do I need to do a whole stream coming up soon and just call like how to color blank? And then you guys just throw th things at me. Um, let's see. That is a beautiful drawing. Uh, let's duplicate that. Do one over there. All right. So here's my, here's a quick metallic type object coloring tips, pro tip. I guess first I'm going to just select all of these. This is going to be very uh, rough and quick, but hopefully you'll get the idea. And uh, let's say that this thing, this brick is uh, made of um, whoops, wrong layer, is made of, uh, what do you want, gold or silver? Or, or uh, how do I, why do I want to do this? Your, your choice. <laughs> we could probably change it pretty easily. Um, so if, if this object on the left is, let's say that this one is, um, this is matte, And uh, this is metal, we'll say, or it's just shiny. So if you've got an object that is not reflective at all, um, hold on, where is, what am I doing? Let me get on that layer and then do that. Nope, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? There we go. Sorry, I don't, it's not like I have like right layers or anything in here. <laughs> but anyway, if the subject, if the if the the object, whatever it is, is uh, is matte finished and it's not going to be very reflective, right? And let's just say I've got a light coming over here from the right somewhere. Um. If it's not reflective, then you're not going to get a whole lot of, uh, you know, specular highlights or anything. You know, if this had like a, you know, the texture of like a, a piece of plastic or, or not even like a rough plastic or, or something like that, then uh, you'll end up with, you know, kind of basic, simple color shapes on it. And if your object is uh, shiny, let's say, or, or reflective, um, and I'll start, we'll just say with the same, same colors here on this, on the top and the side. Whoops. Let's 
So we start at the same point, but now the shapes of the reflections are going to depend on what the object's made of and what the surface looks like and a whole bunch of other things. But if I was doing this, you were paying me to make this look like it was made of silver. Um, I would start with drawing some uh, uh, specular highlights is what they're called. Um, and maybe they look something like this. Um, I'm just throwing some things around here real quick. And then get a much brighter, you know, much brighter highlight and add that to it. Now it's already starting to feel a little bit more reflective than it was before. Just because there are, you know, different colored shapes on this. I don't know if this is, a, this is not a great example of this, but <laughs> it's the first thing that popped into my head. Maybe it's not that bright, but there's a wider range of what's light and what's dark because it's more reflective. And so it's going to reflect what's light and it's also going to reflect what's darker. But it mostly just has to do with how your, the shapes of your, you know, your specular highlights. I mean, if it was like, a, what do you call it? Like a Colossus's arm. That, that's, that's the one first thing that popped in my head. Um, so like, hold on one second. And let's say it's the same, um, this is a horrible hand. Um, <laughs> say it's the same setup here. So uh, again, I'm gonna get a dark, uh, dark color. We'll fill him in. I'm doing a book right now where a guy has a chrome arm. So this is very fresh. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna go get some brighter colors. Now again, if this guy was like a scuffed up, you know, non-metallic arm then you know i would put some rough highlights on it and you know call it a day but if you really want to make it look reflective it means getting you know brighter uh smaller uh specular highlights and always put at least two different colors on them so you get some of that 3d effect going on but it's really just about how the shape of your specular highlights. And the specular highlights are these really bright ones, you know? And uh, and it depends on how detailed you want to get. You know, we could come in here and add little ridges all over this or whatever. It's all going to help it look more, um, you know, metallic. And, I, and, and, and a lot of times... Um, I mean, we could spend all day doing this. But it's really, it's about, it's about the reflections. It's all about the reflections. First time here, I recently added on Patreon. Did you put these out on Discord or your Patreon to try out and submit? Uh, no, no, no. These are just the, 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 the color jam hashtag on Twitter. And I think there's a Twitter account now, color jam. But no, it's, it's, it's someone else handles that. I don't. It's, I have nothing to do with the actual color jam thing. But yeah, you can you can search for that on Twitter and and probably find it. Just hashtag uh, color jam latest and you'll see it. But yeah, thanks for coming by. All right, and I'm gonna temporarily change this title. Again, <laughs> talking about how to color stuff. Why is it typing so slow?
There we go. All right. What else? What else do we need to know how to color? Let's knock it all out. <laughs> Just let's solve everyone's problems today. Best colors in the business. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Fur. Face shadows. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, just, you know, can you put together a sound bite and help me do complex anatomy? Uh, hmm. Face shadows is a tough one. Study anatomy. <laughs> I mean, that's what it boils down to. Uh, where did your inspiration come from? How much of it was influenced? How much of it influenced your style? Um, I started noticing coloring from Edgar Delgado, uh, coloring, uh, uh, Umberto Ramos. Um, no, no problem, Michael. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was one of the first names. Him, uh, Alex Sinclair, who's, they're both still working. Um, his stuff on Jim Lee, like the Hush book and all that, I just remember liking a lot. Um, but yeah, my style is kind of just a combination of all these, a lot of people over the years and what I think works. And I don't even know if, I don't even have a good style. That's my, I think it's one of my problems, is I tend to just be a chameleon and, and whatever whatever the artist is doing, like I'm going to try to do something to complement that. And if it's whether it has something to do with like what I think works best on a piece may or may not be, you know, in a, in a certain style of, of mine. It's just what I think it works on that piece, you know? I was just trying to color a straight drop shadow door over a rounded surface and I realized I didn't know how that should look oh okay uh wow yeah that's a <laughs> that that's a heavy one but um I can tell you the way I would do it uh you know which is usually just to uh find like uh think about a contour on the face wherever that shadow needs to be um, like you can imagine, like imagine the profile, you know, of whatever character it is that you're looking at and draw that line, you know, basically down wherever, you know, on the face that it is. Um, but it does involve, you know, there's perspective and 3D. And yeah, I, I don't have any sound bites for that one. Sorry. <laughs> it's one of those things that I would just do and have no idea how to explain it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to think about that one. That's a. I don't, I don't know of a. I don't know of a sound bite for that one. <laughs> it, it 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 depends a lot. Yeah, there's just too many factors there for me to try to figure that one out one of the best teachers of it well thank you i appreciate that dead house thank you uh i admire the coloring of casper last name i can't pronounce oh yeah very pretty It's interesting. Lots of blue. It's it, it's always interesting when you can like, you can tell their favorite colors. <laughs> it's like it's the a lot of blue and pink. But yeah, it's interesting. It's always it's interesting to me to see like someone's. I mean, a lot of this is one book too, and it, I made mean, a color scheme for that book. But yeah, no, it's really solid stuff though. Very cool.
Any other questions before we wrap this up today? Thank you all for coming. I'll take one or two more, uh, and then I'm going to get some lunch. Going once. Also, uh, click buttons. Click a button somewhere. That'll help. Best place to start getting experience for newbies. Uh, download images on the internet and start coloring them. <laughs> I don't know if there's another way. <laughs> yeah they like you like you know the, the the first time you know the first thing you color shouldn't be your first job <laughs> you know i mean i don't know if that had to be said or not but yeah um but that's where I, we've, we're talking about that kind of experience odin's day what is that is today odin's day oh is it just is it wednesday is that is that the thing wednesday is derived from the old english means woden's day the germanic god woden was also known as odin the norse all father of all gods well there you go <laughs> Experience for newbie professionals. Ah, okay. Uh, go, go to, go to wherever uh, people are gathering on the internet. I, I have no idea what people do these days to to do that. I, I don't know. For when I started, it was Facebook groups, but f Facebook groups have sort of devolved into, well, if they were ever any good, most of them weren't. But uh, I got my start basically just in a facebook group with a bunch of other people making comics um trying to make comics but uh yeah how, how to how to find work how to get work how to get attention of editors like all that stuff i feel like i've i've um uh, i've i've forgotten or or, or, or never knew <laughs> yeah Yeah, there you go. Igor's got, uh, yeah, Reddit, digital webbing. Uh, is Pencil Jack still there? Yeah, there's a, there's a subreddit called uh, Comic Collabs or something like that. What is what is the name of that? Uh, there's a Reddit for that, of course. Um, yeah, Comic Book Collabs. Uh, it, it is, it, it, I don't, I don't have anything to do with this subreddit. I'm just reading this, but it says creators helping creators make comics. In addition to help finding collaborators, this is a great place for feedback and advice, post your work, ask for help. Lots of people around. Yeah. So like, this seems like, uh, you know, there's 21,000 people subscribe to this subreddit. So, um, yeah, there it is. I'll link that. That seems to be a, maybe a good place to start. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, how? Hi, Kurt. Uh, hello. Uh, maybe is a stupid question. How do you send your files when they're too heavy for an email? Um, yeah, I don't usually send heavy files through email. Uh, I, I like Dropbox personally. Um, I live out of Dropbox. <laughs> My life is in Dropbox. Um, it's a folder you install on your computer, and everything in that folder gets updated to the cloud automatically. And it's backed up constantly. So you can just go into any file in that folder, right click it and get a link for it. And then there you go. Google Drive is another one. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Mega is another one. Um, but no, I use Dropbox. Dropbox has every page I have ever colored, <laughs> everything I've ever done. And and it's and I'm I'm paying for whatever the business level or something because I've, I've, I've got a bunch of space 
but to me that's that that's the most like you know um uh, set and forget type of thing and it, it makes it easier because that way whatever i'm working on at any point you know i can get it on my phone and get it on my tablet or whatever you know that's what i would do All right, guys. Well, the questions are dwindling. Uh, thank you all so much for coming today. Do check the links in the description. I've got courses, full courses that are, are much better explained than what I did today. <laughs> uh, but uh, but no, uh, I've got courses on all uh, coloring and clip and Photoshop and Procreate and, and various things. Uh, Learn.com, color.com. There's a coupon in the description to get you half off anything. It really helps my channel a lot. Um, so there you go. Yep. Really appreciate it guys. Today was a fun one. Uh, I'll be back next week. We'll actually color something. I'm actually just, uh, I've had a bit of a hiatus, uh, not really hiatus, but some space between, um, uh, the, the last issue of the blue flame and this one and, uh, in and after in both. So, uh, I've got plenty of stuff. Vault books, vault don't they don't care if I color this stuff on the internet. So uh, I'll have plenty of pages to color for y'all over the next couple of weeks, and so you'll probably see me going back to doing the old, uh, you know, the Wednesday stream, and then like you know, randomly throughout the week <laughs> as I have time. But uh, if you see me on and want to come in and say hi, then come on in. But uh, thank you always. Uh, thank you as oh, I'm reading. Your, uh, thank you as always. Yes, sorry, but um been a good time y'all take care of yourselves be nice and uh we'll do this again uh we'll do this again very soon take care